Okay, so we are going to dive into our study of Ephesians chapter 6, 1 through 9, and uh, hope you had a good Thanksgiving week. Um, God is good, no matter what. Amen, all the time. Let's uh, go ahead and begin with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow our hearts before you and ask you to open our spiritual eyes and ears. Cause our hearts to be receptive to your word today and help me to convey your heart concerning the topics covered in the text. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, obey, I called it. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> I know some of you will not know where that reference comes from, if you're too young to know. It came from an 80s TV show called Different Strokes. That word obey is almost offensive today, in today's world. Uh, there is something to be said about the word obey. Society today thinks obedience is old-fashioned and archaic, no longer relevant or even good psychology. Some experts say, we've evolved to a better understanding of civilization, how to develop the individual. Therefore, teaching obedience to children is harmful. Nowadays, we see the results of children not being taught to obey their parents. We hear more, it's about my rights, what I deserve, and what I want, while seeing families disintegrate right, as the decades pass. And as we see society spiraling downward into a dark place of rebellion and chaos by the day, we must come to grips with cause, with the cause. Our world is quickly losing the ability to learn, to think clearly and even follow instructions, let alone use what was once called common sense. <laughs> Talk, I'm sure you guys have talked about this in your groups. Your tables. Many pulpits today are acquiescing to the pressure of culture and what is popular thinking. We've seen on the internet pastors, and not ours by the way, support such beliefs as gay marriage and the LBGTQ plus agendas and that living together before marriage is okay. So since we know society frowns on this concept of obedience, especially regarding raising children, there is pressure from the world to conform. We feel the squeeze as parents, looking at parent magazines full of new methods. Some are good, some against scripture. From the world's point of view, correcting a child's thinking has become unacceptable, even in some schools. High self-esteem is the holy grail of child-rearing. Now, I do believe in nurture, nurturing self-esteem. God wants children to know they are loved and to love themselves. But what some modern-day experts do not understand is that God made man, mankind, and knows best how to train and develop young ones. God has placed squarely on the parents' shoulders the need to teach their children obedience and how to know him. He knew that learning to obey parents, whether they liked it or understood the reason, would also train them to obey God. As a mother myself, I know raising children is complicated. It takes a lot of time and energy to not only know the child, but also learn how to teach and direct them according to their personality, their interests, their giftedness. But God has made one thing uncomplicated for a child to learn obedience. Most of us know that you don't have to teach a child to misbehave because all humans are born with a sin nature. So asserting one's will and wishes comes naturally. Just take a two-year-old. Dr. Jordan Peterson a clinical psychologist from Canada and author of the best-selling publication, 12 Rules for Life, says, I'm just curious, how many of you are familiar with Dr. Jordan Peterson? A few of you, okay. He's very good. 
Not 100%. Not one person is 100%, right? But one amusing statistic, he says, is that two-year-olds are the most violent people. <laughs> the good news is that consistent correction of poor behavior limits aggression in the child. Without consistent correction, the child will not outgrow poor behavior. A child needs to find limitations to his or her behavior in order to organize and regulate their minds. To do so on their own would require too much effort, says Dr. Jordan Peterson. Now, I've posted a link to the article that I quoted there uh, on my Facebook page, Pearls of Wisdom, God's Word for Everyday Life, or you can also take a photo of this screen here so you can go back. and It's an excellent article. He is not a Christian from what I know, from what I understand, but he was raised with a lot of biblical understanding. He has a lot of conservative values, and he has a very good understanding being a clinical psychologist, has done a lot of, he's just very knowledgeable. And when I had listened to him, he just has a very good handle on raising children, from my humble point of view, and from God's word. Now, I think um, there's another person, there's a very, very well-respected Christian psychologist, Dr. James Dobson. And he has books on child rearing that can assist parents. And this particular publication has three of his books in one. So if you need, it, if you need help as a parent, I highly recommend Dr. Dobson. He was my go-to guy when I was raising kids. But I'll get back to the original directive from Paul the Apostle. In verse 1, he commands children to obey their parents. Children, he says, I could just see it. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. The word obey, it's a strong word, isn't it? I tried to find a different word expressing the same sentiment, but all, and I mean all the translations that I saw, and there were about 30 of them or more, they never changed the word obey. It's the word obey in every single one. I even looked up a thesaurus to see if there were any other, you know, nuances of the word obey. But none of them express the same sentiment as clearly as the word obey itself. But the commandment isn't just obey your parents. He says, in the Lord. That's very important. Look at the beautiful expanded expression of this verse in the blue. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That is, accept their guidance and discipline as his representatives. For this is right. For obedience teaches wisdom and discipline. That's the Amplified. It's a beautiful expansion, I believe, of giving a... Uh, well, it's some commentaries say obeying... I'm sorry, got to go back to my notes here. The Amplified Bible uh, expands the original Greek. So you're not just getting a man's opinion. Oh, we want to add this thought. It's actually are expanding the translation of the original language. Some commentaries say obeying parents is like obeying God. And I think that is true. But it also implies obeying parents so long as they don't make you sin. In the Lord, bring safety to that command. Because blind obedience has a danger factor. God knew he had to add that caveat. Otherwise, one would, could be led to believe that it's obedience no matter what, even if it means you sin against yourself or others. Can you see that? Just like wives obey your husbands, in the Lord, he attaches that to it. It's very important. So like God forbid, what if a parent were, parents were criminals and they asked their child to break the law? We know that that would not be obedience pleasing to the Lord. Or a foolish father telling his son to hit his sister, causing his son to act violently against his sister. That would be sinful. That would not please the Lord. So that's an example of where it can go wrong. In his early church letter, Paul the Apostle, inspired by the Holy Spirit, wrote to the Ephesians about the, necess the necessary qualities of obedience and dignity or honor for a reason. We've already heard a great message about the relationship dynamics between husband and wife from Sue. Very good job, Sue. Both marriage partners are dearly loved by God, equal in the sight of God, yet different in their God-given roles on earth. 
I like this chart. It nicely lays out the parts of the family hierarchy. But today our lesson takes us to children, fathers, slaves, and masters. As the Apostle Paul wrote this to be read aloud in the church, there must have been children, of course, hearing it as well as the rest of the body. He knew how important this dynamic was to the harmony of the family, which is the first layer of people in the church. As the family goes, so goes the church, I've heard it said. A commentator from Blue Letter Bible, David Guzik, says children obeying their parents is simply the right thing to do. This moral force is significant to God because he knows what it will do for the child. Learning to listen to their parent and obeying their instructions teaches them, as already been said, teaches them to obey God later. And it brings self-control and respect toward them now and later. These qualities also engender teachability, consideration of others, and patience. On top of this command comes a secondary related one. Verse 2, the Amplified Version says, Honor, esteem, value as precious your father and mother, and be respectful to them. This is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. This was Paul quoting the Lord when the Lord was speaking to Moses in Exodus 20, verse 12. Isn't that a beautiful translation? This version brings a fuller understanding, as I've said before, of the intent of the Greek language. Because our English language is so limited. We have fewer words to express the same Greek word. That's why I refer to it so often. So we also have seen the loss of respect in our society today. Can we all say yes, we've seen it? How many of you have seen loss of respect in anyone in our <laughs> We should all be raising our hands. Giving parents respect, honor, and dignity is critical to properly developing godly character. Now, a lot more can be said about what else parents could instill in their children. But today's text is all about obedience and respect or dignity. This is foundational to all other character traits God wants to develop in them. And I will just leave it there for now. So, and as adults, we are no longer obligated, we know, to obey our parents, but we're commanded to still honor them. We should be respectful, even if they don't deserve it. But we don't have to be hands-on if the parent is abusive. And what does that look like? If it involves caring for an elderly parent and they abuse you, you can make sure someone else is caring for your elderly parent and that is still honoring them. So if you're in that, in that situation, you can pray over your role, and the Holy Spirit will be faithful to lead and guide you as you honor your aged parents. Now, Paul addresses the fathers. Verse 4. Let's look again at the amplified version of this verse to better understand the original Greek. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Do not exasperate them <laughs> to the point of resentment, which demands, with demands that are trivial or unreasonable or humiliating or abusive, nor, nor by showing favoritism or indifference to any of them. Wow, that is an all-encompassing instruction, isn't it? Very all-encompassing. And it helps parents understand that they're reading that what that can look like to exasperate or, or um, provoke a child to anger because there are many causes why that can happen. And so I love the Amplified expands that to give you an understanding of what that actually means. But bring them up tenderly with loving kindness in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So that's Ephesians 6, 4. Now we know children are developing are in a developing stage in life. And as Paul addresses fathers here, how they treat children shapes them in many ways. Slide 13. It's been said, how one views your earthly father affects how you view God the Father. What a significant impact. 
A father is a representative of God in that role, and he must do his best to be God-like in his actions towards his children if they are to have the proper view of God. The message, although to fathers can be applied to us, we are either biological, adoptive, or proxy mothers, as in a school or Sunday school teacher. But fathers are extremely important figureheads in a child's life. And women as mother figures are also powerful influencers. We've heard the, whole, the old adage, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. How many of you have ever heard that expression before? Yeah, it's a very old adage. There's so much truth in the, both of those sayings. We'd be wise to take those to heart, but much more so, of course, the word of God. Now, Paul shifts his last relationship address to slaves and masters. At that time, one-third of the Roman world, <clears throat> uh, which the church lived within, consisted of slavery. In Dave Guzik's commentary, when the apostle says, slaves, bondservants, be obedient, he adds, as to Christ. The words, as to Christ, changes our entire perspective as workers. It reminds us that our work can be and should be done as if we were working for Jesus, and we are. He quotes from the evangelical Anglican theologian and writer Handley Mole, quote, the gospel found slavery in the world, and in many regions, particularly with the Romans and the Greeks, it was a very bad form of slavery. The gospel began at once to undermine it with its mighty principles of, the, of equality of all souls in the mystery and dignity of manhood and of the equal work of redeeming love wrought for all souls by the supreme master. But its plan was not to batter but to undermine. So while the gospel in one respect left slavery alone, it doomed it in another. So slavery, so as slavery continued in the New Testament era, the love of Christ seemed to kick it against it, it kick against it, con, uh, excuse me. The love of Christ seemed to kick against its continued existence. There it goes. Just as the power of the gospel eventually even ended the violent Viking era. And in this New Testament period, Paul was greatly concerned how all Christians, even slaves, reflected Christ in their life. Therefore, he commanded slaves to be obedient. There's that word again, to lose to, to those who were their earthly masters with respect for authority and with a sincere heart seeking to please them as a service to Christ. And it goes on to say, not in the way of eye service, working only when someone's watching you to please man, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart, rendering service with goodwill as to the Lord, and not only to man, men, Knowing whatever good thing each one does, he will receive it, this back from the Lord, whether he is slave or free. So then, if a Christian was a master, he was commanded to be godly in his conduct too. You masters, he says, do the same, showing goodwill toward them, and give up threatening and abusing, abusive words, knowing that he, who is both their true master and yours in heaven, and that there is no partiality with him, regardless of one's earthly status. That's verse 7 through 9. So praise God, in this country, slavery is illegal. So how does that command apply to us today? Could we compare master-slave or bond-servant to employee-employer relationship and work ethic? Absolutely. As Guzik stated, the Lord is more concerned about how you and I represent him than our rights, what we deserve, or what we want. That should be slide 19. I don't know, is that what we're, where we're at? I can't see it from here. Thank you. I want to read that again, because we, I think we miss it in this generation, <laughs> in this time of our lives. The Lord is more concerned 
about how you and I represent him than our rights, what we deserve, or what we want. Now, not that he doesn't care about those things. He does. But this lesson today concerns how you and I, children, dads, moms, proxy moms, employers, employees, how we reflect Christ in our daily lives. When we treat each other in a godly way, we show folks the character of Christ. Therefore, it keeps coming back to our individual walk in the Lord. Let's do a little introspection this week, asking the Holy Spirit to fill us afresh, examine our hearts, and use the word to show us in any way where we are not Christ-like, and we can ask him to affirm where we are on track. Don't you love that? God is not an ogre. He's not this punishing, you know, monster. He is a loving father. He wants to lift you up. He wants to build your self-esteem. He wants you to know you are loved unconditionally. And he will speak truth to you and I. He will tell you what's good about you. But he will also tell you where there's an error. So you can correct and become Christ-like. Because that is what God is all about in our lives, is to form us into his image as we reflect Jesus. So that is why it's so important when we are raising children to teach them to be respectful and obedient because it will follow them the rest of their days. You're literally forming, like their little brains are like clay. Wherever you, whatever you say to them makes a little imprint in that wet clay. And over time, that clay will harden. So whatever imprint you put into that child's brain solidifies and it stays there. Now, of course, we know our brain is not hardened clay. So as we grow older and let's say we didn't have godly parents and we learned some good and bad things, we can adjust our thinking and we can change our attitudes if we've been off, you know. But it is harder, isn't it? Because some things come naturally to us. If we were raised a certain way, we can have this kind of a snotty attitude that just sort of comes out of nowhere. I know sometimes I do that, and I, think, I just heard my mother in my voice. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you know. And it just comes out of nowhere because it's not really nowhere. It's in the back of your brain. It's become a default. So we have to consistently learn. So let's ask ourselves these questions this week for those of us who are raising children. Are we teaching our children the ways of the Lord? Or are we honoring our adult parents? Or... Are we conducting ourselves in respectful ways? Or are we prioritizing his character over our rights, what we deserve, and what we want? I think if I were to highlight any of these comments in this message, it would be that final one. Are we prioritizing his character over our rights, what we deserve, and what we want? And let's remember, it's obey God first in priority even when it's hard even when I don't benefit even if I'm scared even when it's not fun yeah. amen so I'm sure that there are more questions we could ask him but let's pray it and now give this message to him that has been inserted into your minds that the Holy Spirit will take that, the seed of his word and embed it in our hearts as the Holy Spirit can cause it to grow. Lord, we recognize that training our children to obey is very important to you. So show us how to follow through. We realize honoring our parents is a command with a promise. So help us to know how to walk that out. And as employers or employees, help us to be respectful and work unto you because you watch us all the time. Lord, we want to want to please you. Lord, we admit sometimes we only think of our own rights or what we deserve or what we want. Help us to put you into our thoughts more often and make obeying you a priority in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. We're done early. <laughs>